I'll, I'll try to do both the uh, review for that product and cross product since uh, cross product is so even though we are not going to be using cross products heavily for another two three weeks I think it's good to uh, I think it's good to just to do the reviews in one place because um, cross product is one of the things that you are supposed to have seen in physics 4a so so let me write down products of vectors and what we'll be specifically covering will be the dot product and cross product. These come by different names. So in both of these cases, it's good to imagine um, uh, imagine two vectors <laughs> in somewhere in space. So uh, let me draw those two vectors. I have my vector A and vector B. We introduce them as um, arrows, and arrow is the, I think, most useful visualization of vectors. It has a, a, a length, and it has a sense of direction. And, um, and those are both important properties of vectors. Now, what is not an important property of vector is what position they are at. So vectors, the way we use them always um, refer to some kind of difference. So if we are going back to the coordinate representation before, you can imagine a tail of the vector being at the origin always. But even if you were to translate it off origin, the um, as long as you keep the length and orientation of the vector same, it would still um, remain the same vector. And when I, I, and I say the words length and orientation, because as we define these product of vectors, we want to do it in a way that's uh, coordinate independent. As in, even though I could, as we have last time, I could define an axis system. I could define X and Y axis and describe these vectors in terms of the components along X and Y. We can do that, and there are times when we'll find it convenient to do. But for us to talk about product of vectors, we don't need any of that. We can just uh, observe the vectors that exist in space and uh, characterize their direction. So the parameter that's going to be most useful to us is the relative direction between the two vectors. Uh, so call that angle theta. Then we, as in we physicists, define that product this way. This is what I would call physics definition of that product. By the way, the that product goes by a couple different names. You might have seen the word inner product, or you might have seen the word the scalar product, which is not to be confused with multiplication by a scalar factor. Um, uh, these are all. Uh, commonly used uh, words for the same operation, dot product. The main thing about the dot product is that it takes two vectors and, or it takes, as, uh, this is not a symbol for dot product, but it takes as a, a input for two vectors and then it turns those two vectors into a number, a scalar that doesn't have any sense of direction. And, um, and, there are, there are stories behind the why sometimes it's called inner product. And I guess what I'm explaining is why it might sometimes be called a scalar product. So the physics definition of that product is if you have vectors A and B, then A dot B is equal to, and I'm going to introduce some common convention, which is, so given this vector A, if I simply write down A without the arrow on top, what that conventionally means is that that's the magnitude of the vector. Or if you really want to specify the mathematical operation, what this would be, oh, would it be, it would be the A dotted to itself, square root it. But I guess we need to finish defining the dot product for this to be useful. So this dot product will be A times B magnitude times the angle between the two vectors, cosine theta. And I'm saying this is our definition of that product. 
you might have seen that product introduced in a different way. I think uh, in math class, you usually see the dot product in this form. This might have been what you saw, how you saw it defined in a math class, sum of product of components. So a i times b i and add it up from i equals one to three or x, y, z or however many dimensions. So, so this is how it's commonly defined in a math class. The biggest weakness there is that in order to talk about component of the a vector, ax, ay, az, you need a coordinate axis. You cannot talk about components without coordinate axis. And um, in this physics definition, we are trying to get as far as we can without having to define any uh, coordinate axis. So we want to coordinate free representation of the uh, things we want to do so that um, we have the maximum freedom when we actually do introduce coordinate axis. So, so this is the definition of that product. I guess as far as the uh, mathematical expressions go, it's not too complicated. Um, the maybe one part to, to take care is this uh, uh, theta that should be the angle between the two vectors. And um, this has some nice properties, I guess. Um, so a lot of these nice properties, they follow from the property of cosine theta. And you can also a little bit see it in, um, in the presentation here. Um, so let me... Uh, note some of those properties. I guess, um, let's see, what do I want to focus it on? Um, let me focus on the algebraic properties of the dot product. So one is the uh, commutability. <laughs> I'm not sure it's a, if it's a commutability or if it's a commutatibility, uh, whatever. Um, this product commutes. So what it means is when you have a dot b that's equal to b dot a um you might look at me and say that doesn't sound all that surprising that's how we are used to dealing with the things product commute what's so special about this i mention it because we'll see other products where uh, products don't commute that, that uh, and uh, you might uh, let's see would you have seen it uh, when you do linear algebra when you look at the matrix multiplication you will see that matrix multiplication does not in general commute and you can see how this is related to this uh, to the fact that the angle goes in as an argument of cosine uh, ar yeah, argument of cosine rather than sine or tangent. Um, imagine this picture here. So if you have a dot product with the b, then you have this angle between them. So if you're trying to imagine what uh, b dot product with the a looks like, then it's uh, like swapping the position of a and b. Uh, that's what commuting the two things looks like here. So if you imagine, okay, um, if I have B dot product with A, you can try to consider if uh, this B dot A would be different from A dot B. And when you're answering the question, the number one resource is the definition. So when you go to the definition, you can see that as you swap A and B, nothing changes. Uh, so this is a scalar multiplication. So there you have a great intuition for um, just multiplying two numbers. And really the place where the order of A and B might matter is here, cosine of theta. So this theta could be positive. It could be going counterclockwise somehow, or it could be going clockwise. And if you remember uh, some things about cosine, cosine is an even function. Um, it's uh, it is to show on graph. If you are graphing what cosine of theta looks like from, I don't know, um, minus pi over 2 to plus 
pi over 2, then, um, then at theta equals 0, you have the maximum value of cosine theta 1. And as you go to pi over 2, the cosine theta decreases to 0 at pi over 2. And it does the exact same thing on the other side. Cosine of uh, minus 30 degrees, it's same as cosine of 30 degrees, which necessarily isn't the case with the... Uh, we, it's not necessarily the case with the sine theta. So, so with the cos, um, so with the cosine theta, this being an even function, when you swap the order, uh, when you make a theta go to minus theta, nothing really changes. So, so, so that's one property of that product that you can actually get from the definition here. That's one of the things I like about the definition. And the other property, which um, takes more time getting used to, even though it's uh, the property that you've known for quite some time, uh, what I want to emphasize here is just how, um, how useful some of the rules that you have learned in arithmetic is. So here's a rule that you have learned in arithmetic you've learned to how to distribute um, uh, distribute products. So uh, distribution of product. Um, in terms of scalar quantities, it works out this way. If you have scalar A multiplying with scalars B plus C, then what the distribution means is you get, you, you get to distribute this product into the, the parenthesis thing. So this whole quantity is equal to a times b plus a times c. So this is something familiar you have seen uh, before us introducing vectors. And um, what's uh, nice about vector product is so, so this is um, um, this is the defining um, Property of uh, property of field, <laughs> uh, property of uh, mathematical arrangement, where you have something that's like addition, and something that's like a product, and that product quantity, unless it obeyed some sort of distributive property, we wouldn't call it a product. The fact that we call that product product is the hint that the property that I outlined here also hold for vectors. So imagine this, if you have um, vector A multiplying with the sum of vectors B and C, what you can distribute this as is the product A dot B plus the product A dot C. So, and, and this property is going to be useful as we uh, try to look at some of the consequences of this physics definition of that product. Um, the most important being, so you have seen this uh, other alternative definition of that product. You have seen uh, maybe this in your math class or, um, or maybe even your previous physics 4A class. Uh, it, it, not everyone says uh, Perth Kennedy about the um, the coordinate independence of uh, vectors as I am. Because <laughs> um, uh, oftentimes it is easy to define a coordinate system and use it. So most people don't dwell on how all these uh, discussions, they don't require you to uh, define a coordinate axis. But anyways, um, so this is the... Um, this is what you might have seen as definition of that product in uh, either in a math class or possibly even physics for A. So when you have A dot B, uh, so the compact form I wrote before is to say, okay, that's the sum over I from one to three and the product of AI times BI. Or if for a three-dimensional space, this would boil down to AX times BX plus AY times BY plus AG times BG. And um, it's, uh, 
reasonable to wonder um, so which is which um, is my dot product this quantity here or is my dot product this quantity here and the short answer is both so you ought to be able to prove starting from one that um, that that the two statements are equivalent uh, even though they are not stated the same way that um, you should be able to show starting from one of the starting places that you can actually get an expression that looks like in the other one now um, technically speaking this is a wholly equivalent system you know if and only if and it ought to be able to prove starting with this mathematics definition of that product that this is something that you can expect from this um, but that proof is a lot harder than what I'm gonna do so and this is really the other reason that I call this the physics definition of that product if we need to prove some relationship between quantities it's actually a lot easier to start from here and then and and then come up with some expression that we can use to um, estimate some things so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to write out a dot b and somehow break down vectors a and b in terms of their components and then work through these steps so uh, if I'm imagining A and B as vectors, so the A vector would look something like this. It's going to have component along X times X hat plus component along Y, again times Y hat plus AG times um, G hat. And um, let's see. Yeah, so this is the expansion of the vector notation for A in terms of the vectors, uh, vector components of A. And uh, the vector B is also similar. I can write it down as, uh, wait, what do I want to write it down as? Oh, yeah, the capital A, that's the component. So it should be uh, BX times X hat plus by times y hat plus uh, bg times g hat. So with this representation and armed with the knowledge of the commutation commutative property, we can actually do this explicit calculation. Let me set this up. I have a vector dot product with a b. Now, if I'm simply looking at this expression here, I can say that's a b cosine theta. Now, that doesn't really help me prove um, the statement that I want you to prove. So, what I'm um, what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to write out what vectors a and b are in terms of their components because I see that um, I'm gonna get back to. The components. So you imagine that in some space you define the coordinate axis. I have a, some kind of coordinate axis, and I can um, just uh, start writing down different forms of the same thing that I've already uh, written down. Just undo to the point. So uh, I'm going to expand out vectors A and B in terms of their components. So I can actually write A as, okay, that's a uh, um, component of X, component along X times X hat plus the component along Y times Y hat plus the component along G times G hat. That's my vector A. There's nothing wrong with uh, writing it in this longer way. <laughs> uh, let me just finish doing the dot product. This is dot producting with, again, the X component of B plus the Y component of Y vector plus the G component of the G hat vector. And so it's a um, 
potentially long multiplication step involving uh, quite a few unknowns. So um, let me do it this way. I'm going to write uh, three pairs that I see with AX, and then I will note some things that you will be seeing over and over. And then for calculation of A, Y, and A, G, I'll do it more quickly. So let me write out the product with the uh, uh, distributed terms. So I'm just going to write the three um, products that this AX gets distributed into with the X hat, with the Y hat, with the G hat. So I have um, AX, X hat times BX x hat plus ax x hat times by y hat plus az t hat times bz wait sorry h <laughs> i confused myself with these components ax i'm just sticking with the axis ax x hat times bz t hat all right so here we can use the uh, the commutative property of uh, not of the dot product necessarily, but of the uh, numbers of the scalars of in the as the scalar multiplying to other vectors and scalars. So whether I have x hat b um, as it's here, or if I have a b times x hat, it's the same thing. That doesn't change anything. So I can imagine um, pulling these coefficients out to combining it with the first two coefficient. So with this dot product, really what I'm working out is x hat dot x hat, x hat dot y hat, x hat dot z hat. And let me apply the definition. I have a one vector dot product with another vector, our product of the magnitude of vectors, times cosine theta. Here, with x and x, cosine theta is zero. It's the same vector. They're pointing to the same angle. So I have, for the first term, ax, bx, and nothing else. I mean, there's times one um, plus. Now, it gets interesting with the x hat and y hat. So if uh, your x axis is coming towards you, then your y-axis might be going to your uh, length coming towards you. Yeah, let me have it go to your uh, go to your right. So then x hat <laughs> that product with y hat they are perpendicular. So you get cosine of ninety degrees. So this x hat dot y hat that's zero, and since the that product is zero, it doesn't matter what the coefficients are. AX times BY times zero is zero. So I have zero here plus X hat dot product with the G hat. That's another zero uh, because the X vector, so pointing towards you and the way I was describing my coordinate X is GX is pointing directly up, still perpendicular. So, so I hope you are beginning to notice a pattern. So when you have this dot product, you need these unit vectors to be the same uh, two unit vectors, both x hat, both y hat, both z hat, in order for this product not to vanish. When it's anything different, it'll vanish. So, so for the rest, I don't really have to write out three more terms and then three more terms. I can just uh, okay. Let me let me just do the uh, the one term that I know won't go to zero. So with the a y y hat. It's going to be a y times, and the only thing it can dot product to two and not go to zero is b y y hat. So it's going to be a y times b y times, and um, that product of two y hats will give you one because it's a unit vector. And done with the, the first y hat, let me add the contribution from g hat. So it's the same deal. All the other dot products will go to zero except for the one with the G component. So we have um, A, Z, B, G uh, times cosine of zero or one. And you can see that as I clean this up and write it out, AX, BX plus AY, BY 
plus a z b z and that matches the definition of that product that you have learned before and um and yeah and this is the uh, that product there are other uh, visual ways to interpret it you could uh, think of it as a uh, so that product is um you imagine taking projection of this vector along the other vector and you could describe the dot product as a, a product between this uh, projection vector and the um Oh, I guess once you've taken the projection, then you just multiply the magnitudes together. That will give you the product. 